Well, it is official. We have reached 50,000 subscribers. So first of all, thank you so much for all of your support over the last year and a half-ish. It's been a lot of fun sharing our reptiles with the YouTube community. As promised, today we'll be doing the Rex Q&A session. In response to our video asking you for questions about Rex and about alligators, we got some really, really good suggestions. So today we'll be going over the top 20-ish or so questions that we found. But first, if this is your first time meeting Rex, I do want to go over his story with you quick because we were never expecting to have an alligator as a pet, you could say. It all started with a guy who took home Rex as a hatchling from the Everglades back in the 80s. He kept Rex in a small four foot wooden box for the first 27 years of his life with not a whole lot of room to swim and not a ton of food. He was fed about a mouse every 10 to 14 days or so. And his owner loved Rex, but he just was misinformed on how to properly take care of an alligator. So after I discovered Rex in his current living situation, I spent the next six months trying to tell his owner that, you know, an alligator really needs more space than that. And finally, one day he asked if we wanted Rex. So although we were never expecting to have an alligator, we made it work just to get Rex out of that situation. We renovated a guest bedroom in our house uh, to be an alligator room. And now he has about eight by eight feet of space with a heated filtered pool, basking lights, plants, a cave, and the whole nine yards. We have recently added a snapping turtle enclosure into his room and although he, is, he wasn't a huge fan of it originally, he is starting to get used to the idea of having a roommate now. We have had Rex for about four years now and in the first year he grew about a foot and we were wondering, uh oh, what did we get ourselves into? But then he pretty much stopped growing so the veterinarian who's been helping us out with Rex this entire time is pretty certain that he is done growing and he hasn't grown in the last three years. If anything, he's gotten a little bit stronger and maybe his muscle tone has improved a little bit and that's not a bad thing, that's good. Uh, he has not grown though in length uh, since that first year. So he is permanently stunted at about four, four and a half feet or so, and his snout curves upwards as a result of the neglect in his previous home due to lack of room and a poor diet. His, as he was growing, his snout would hit the sides of this little box that he was kept in, and over time, it slowly started to deform and curve upwards. Also, his teeth kind of grow out sideways, and he came to us with not only mouth rot in his mouth, but also a condition called glassy teeth where the teeth are kind of clear and glassy looking and opaque, and that's caused from a lack of calcium. So that has improved in our care. His teeth are now white again, but they do still kind of grow out sideways. So he has some health issues, but it doesn't slow him down one bit. He's still a rambunctious little American alligator, and he acts like nothing is wrong with him at all. But as you can see, he is still, I mean, friendly. I'm friendly-ish. He's still definitely a wild animal. He's not domesticated by any means. We would never recommend an alligator for a pet. But despite his past, he's actually a pretty good alligator. He really likes his head scratches, especially. Aww, he loves head scratches. One last thing is he came to us in the wooden box that he was housed in for 27 years. So the first thing we did was we had a bonfire and we took care of that. So now that you know his story, let's get going with his Q&A because there's a lot of really good questions that we'd like to answer for you. First, from Andrea Hernandez 1. Oh my god, I am editing the video and this is the list of questions that I read from while we were filming and I'm just now realizing that that little number after the username represents how many weeks ago the question was asked. I thought it was part of everyone's username and I was trying to figure out subconsciously why everyone had the number one, two, or three after their username. So I apologize in advance because the rest of this video I'm going to butcher all of your usernames. Is Rex a boy or a girl? Well, that's a good question because we have been assuming he's a boy this entire time, but it, nothing has been confirmed actually. He's still a little too small in order to know for sure whether he's a boy or a girl. Basically, to sex an alligator, you have to stick a finger in their cloaca and feel around, and if you feel anything at all, then you're feeling reproductive organs of a male. If you don't feel anything, then it's a female. But our reptile friend has attempted to sex Rex, but his fingers are a little too big, so he explained to us how to do it, and we haven't done it yet, just because I feel too bad about maybe violating him a little bit, but it might be a future, 
I know, yeah, you don't like that idea either. <laughs> but it might be a future video idea if we ever decide to attempt it ourselves. Next question from Annoying Stuff 3. What does Rex eat? Is it fish, rabbits, or even rats? Well, it's all of the above, actually. Rex is a garbage disposal and he eats just about everything. We usually give him live sucker minnows from the bait shop and we throw those into his pool for enrichment, then he gets to actually hunt them down. But that's the only live food he ever gets. We feed frozen thawed animals of other sorts and we give him a variety so that he gets a variety of nutrients in his diet. But what works really well is when one of our snakes doesn't want to eat their mouse or their rat and we just don't know what to do with it, we just feed it to Rex and he takes care of it for us. We also will occasionally get slugs or infertile eggs from our snakes and he eats those for us. It's just a source of protein really. And occasionally an egg, a snake egg will partially develop but not actually hatch. So he'll take care of that too. We gave him a banana once just to see what he'd do and he ate it, but then he kind of sulked in the corner for a little while. He was, he did not like the banana, I guess. Some people will also feed hot dogs to alligators, which you have to be really careful with because a lot of hot dogs have high sodium levels or that it's not good quality meat. So it's usually avoided, but we tried it once and he took a bite and then he wanted nothing to do with us for a couple of days. So I guess he's spoiled and he only wants whole bodied or whole parts of animals and hot dogs just don't do it for him. Next, this one wasn't specifically asked by someone, but we get it asked all the time on YouTube, is owning an alligator legal? And the answer is where we live, yes, he is legal. I would not be broadcasting over the world that we have an alligator if he wasn't legal where we live. But basically you have to look at not only your country and state laws, but also your county and city laws too. And if all of them allow alligators, then it's okay. But if any one of those tiers does not allow them, then you can't have them. Luckily where we live, it is perfectly legal for us to have him. Next question by Sticky Feets 3 was Rex stunted by the small size of his previous enclosure or was it more due to poor diet? Well, it really was both of them. From having a small enclosure, he didn't have enough room to grow and stretch and run. And from having a poor diet, he didn't have the proper nutrients for muscle and bone growth. So it really was a combination of both of those. From Ceiling Fen 3, I want to know his lifespan. How long can he live now that he's 30 or in this case, 31? Alligators have an average lifespan of about 40 to 50 years. We don't know if he will live the entire 40, 50 years because of his past. However, we're just kind of playing it year by year and he has not slowed down one bit since we got him. So we still think he has a lot of time left with us, which is great. All right, from Marth3, because of his stunted size, how hard would Rex have it in the wild? Would he even survive? He most likely would not survive in the wild, although he is used to hunting live fish from us. It's in kind of a more confined space. So in the wild, in like a lake or a river where the fish can swim away from him further, he's just not a very good hunter. I don't think he'd be able to survive very well or catch his own food. He's also used to human interaction and he's used to humans providing him with food. So he would likely approach humans expecting food and treats, which would label him as a nuisance animal and he would likely be euthanized as a result. If he did manage to find a group of alligators to live with, because of his stunted size, he would likely be the bottom of the totem pole and he would probably get outcompeted for food and likely starve to death. Or get eaten by another larger alligator because that happens too in the wild. Okay, from Dork3, what was Rex's reaction the first time he had his own private pool? It was kind of cool to see this actually. We put him in his pool and he swam around a little bit. He was stretching and he loved it. However, he couldn't hold his breath very well or very long in the water, but over the years, or especially during the first year that we had him, he learned how to hold his breath and his lungs had a better capability of doing so. And now he sleeps underwater at night. That reminds me, actually, when we put him in his room, he could only take a couple steps at a time before needing to lay down and take a rest. But now he makes his nightly rounds around his pool and around his uh, whole enclosure to make sure there are no predators or intruders before going to bed in his pool. Uh, but he doesn't have to stop at all anymore. He can tromp around his room much longer than he could initially when we got him. Next question from Connor Bernard 3 how many pounds does he weigh? And along, along those same lines from Zingius Bug 3 Snake Discovery, how big would Rex be if he wasn't stunted? He is so kind of size related questions, which is why we lumped them together. He should be around 12 to 15 feet because of his age. And he weighs about 15 pounds right now. But he should weigh, if he's a male at his age, he should weigh upwards of 500 pounds. If 
he ends up being a girl, then at her age, she should be upwards of 200 pounds. All right, from Chris Ives 2, how long are you going to keep Rex? Rex is a permanent part of our family. Like, even though we weren't expecting to bring him home, he is part of our clan and he is with us for life. We have no intentions at all of ever rehoming this guy. We've also had people ask us if we bring him outside for walks and such, and we unfortunately don't have the opportunity to do that at our current house, but we plan to, in our next house, which may be just a year or two down the line, building an outdoor enclosure for him with an outdoor pool where he can get natural sunlight and UVB instead of his artificial UVB. Uh, that's the main goal with our next house, is to have something where we can allow Rex to be outside. So that will be happening in the future. From Fuzzy Wuzzy 3, any thoughts on getting Rex a mate or a buddy? We tried it once. We did try introducing a friend temporarily with him. Our local herpetological society had a very similarly sized alligator for adoption that nobody wanted, so we fostered it for two months. We first uh, put him with Rex, uh, assuming that, you know, they're social animals in the wild, they should get along. They did not. Rex, although the alligator was fine, it was a very subdued, you know, submissive alligator, didn't care. Rex does not get along with other alligators is what we learned. So once we found the other alligator's tail in his mouth, which we were supervising quite frequently, so nothing bad ever happened, but when we saw that we immediately separated them and then we had an alligator in our bathroom while we fostered it for two months. So ever since then, we have learned that we cannot introduce any friends or any mates to Rex because he does not get along with roommates. He has temporarily spent time at the Renaissance Festival in the summer with another alligator in what they call the Gator Pond. And this other alligator is a female and they're about the same size. Her name is Bobber. And in the uh, Gator Pond, the female actually acted as the dominant gator and she kind of pushed him around a little bit, which is okay. She kind of put him in his place. Uh, and then after he left for the day, she made this huge bellow of her own in the water, which I guess was kind of cool. It basically the bellow meant, haha, I won and I scared you away. <laughs> so anyway, it's funny how he interacts with other alligators, but we could not permanently keep another alligator in his enclosure. They would have to be supervised at all times. Speaking of bathroom gator, <laughs> Ed's dad, Rock, from the cockroach eating video, came over to our house once when we had this alligator in the bathtub at the moment and he had to use the restroom. So he walked upstairs, the curtain was drawn in front of the bathtub. He started going to the bathroom and then he heard this hissing sound. So he peered behind the shower curtain and inside the bathtub was this alligator staring right back at him. Scared the bejesus out of him, I guess, but it really shouldn't come as a surprise that there's an alligator in the bathroom of our house. You know, it's, it's a reptile house, things like that happen. Let's see, from Moga3, do alligators need cycled water like aquariums? Are there any common diseases or infections that alligators can get? Uh, so the first part of that question, do they need cycled water? They don't necessarily need it, but if you do not use a filter on their pool, then you're gonna have to change out the water very frequently because they do dirty it up. The waste products that would accumulate in the water would be mostly um, nitrates and ammonia especially. And ammonia, if it's in too concentrated of an amount, it can actually burn the animal in the water. This happens more often with fish because they have more sensitive fins, but it can happen to other larger animals too. So we use a filter so that we don't have to change out all of his pool water. It's like 100 gallons in his pool. Um, we don't have to change that out every week like we would have to if we didn't have a filter. And that just makes our lives a lot easier in the long run. So the second part, are there any common diseases or infections? They cannot catch much as far as in captivity goes. Really the biggest issue that people have with pet alligators, and there's not a lot of information out there because not a lot of people have alligators, the uh, biggest issue is that they don't want to eat, especially juveniles. They just are picky eaters. Thankfully, we don't have that issue with Rex as he eats just about everything for us. And as far as other illnesses go, as you can see, alligators are very hardy animals. They can survive even the most brutal of conditions, whether it's frozen water where they stick their snouts out above the water to breathe while the, they're kind of underneath that ice, to living in smaller environments and still finding a way to survive. From Emma Bond 3, what coloration do alligators usually get and why does Rex have stripes? Alligators are normally just a brown, a dark brown color overall as adults. Babies have these bright juvenile stripes and he retained his. It's another kind of stunted 
um, result of his past. Not only did he not grow into an adulthood size, but he also retained all of those baby colors too. Here's a picture of Rex when we first got him, and as you can see, he had pretty bright stripes. And now when you look at him, his colors, if anything, are brighter. So we are not expecting that he will lose his baby stripes at all. Along those same lines from Kingosaurus Rex Wong 3, will Rex ever get his adult colors in the future? Uh, well, we've had him for four years now. His colors haven't really changed a whole lot. So we don't think he will, but I mean, only time will tell, to be honest. There's, he's the only alligator, as far as we're aware, that has had his story being kept so long in a little box. So you'll be along for the ride. If you notice color changes over the years, you'll have to let us know, let us know because we see him every day. So a color variation might not be as noticeable to us than it would be to you. Next, let's see, Will from Zonaster053, will you ever keep Sexy Rexy's skeleton, or at least the skull to study his deformation when he sadly passes away? And you know, I actually hadn't thought of it at all until you asked this question. So that's a really good question. And we were talking about it before filming. And you know, we probably will keep his skeleton. It'd be nice to do like an articulated skeleton of his own uh, when he does sadly pass away, but especially of his head, because it'd be really interesting to see how his skull shape has changed underneath his skin and his scales. So the answer is yes, we probably will, because it would just be one more way that he could help educate people about proper reptile care and husbandry even after he passes. Max, you're doing good, Rex. You're doing good. From The Flying Dutchman 3, do alligators need a lot of exercise or any at all? Do they become easily agitated after a meal, sort of like how a snake gets hissy? Um, so a couple questions here. They don't run around a lot in the wild unless they're running away from something or chasing after their prey, but that doesn't happen much either. They're very opportunistic feeders. They'll just sit and wait till something gets close to their mouth and they'll eat it. So the answer is no, they don't need a ton of room to uh, exercise, especially not to run, but they do need room to be able to walk around and tromp around. They need an area, a large area to call their own, like their own territory. So that's what the bedroom represents to Rex, it's his own territory. When it comes to feeding Rex and his uh, activity levels, he does get pretty active and maybe rambunctious. He sometimes gets into things that he shouldn't when he's hungry. But once he's fed, he kind of is subdued and he calms down a little bit and just kind of sits in his pool to digest. So he actually does calm down after he eats. Okay, Rex, next question is, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I wanted you to help me read the question. I know you're getting bored. I'm sorry. You're doing really well, though. Uh, we are getting there. We're getting there, Rex. Okay, from Finnegan Reigns 3, what is it like for Rex to shed? I've heard alligators don't shed like a snake or a lizard, so what do shed alligator scales look like, or are they even noticeable? We actually don't notice when he sheds. Crocodilians and turtles and tortoises are the only reptiles that shed kind of consistently throughout their life. They don't really go through a shedding cycle like a snake or a lizard does in patches of shed. They're just always shedding off flakes here and there. So we do not see any remnants of any sheds in his enclosure or in his pool or even caught in his filter at all. It's kind of like how a human sheds and that, I mean, it's such small little pieces you don't really notice it. So then we have from Lori Lou 3, a lot of ending in three, weird. Why does Rex hiss when you approach him? Does it mean anything? Rex actually has a couple different noises that he makes. He has a grunt, like a, uh, like a grunt like that. Uh, when we walk into his room and that's kind of like a baby talking to its mother. That's what that grunt uh, signifies. It's just him acknowledging that we're parent figures of sorts or food bearers of sorts. And, he's and he's asking for food, yeah. His other main noise is that hiss that you've heard a couple of times through this video already. And the hiss is, sometimes he'll hiss when he's a little agitated or if he's getting bored like he was right now, he wants to go back downstairs. But mostly it's kind of a territorial noise. He uses it most often when he's in his room and we're approaching his territory, which is his room, and he's hissing to kind of give us a warning saying, hey, this is my space, just leave me alone. But he doesn't always get his way because training is a constant factor when owning an alligator. If you give him an inch, they will take a mile. So he does need to learn and know that, you know, even though it's his territory, we can come in and we do sometimes pick him up and we socialize him and things like that. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven questions left. From Ray Ray Sunshine 2, uh, was Rex tame, like trained or good when you got him or did you have to train Rex? 
When we first got Rex, he was pretty much just as handleable as he is now, kind of wiggly, but then he calms down. But we did train him to be target trained inside of his room. Basically, he follows the end of a stick to another part of his room while we change a light bulb or clean his filter. Just kind of keeps him out of the way, which is nice. And we've also trained him to recognize a frisbee, a, an orange frisbee, as a symbol that we have food. Because we noticed when we first got him, like six months, once he had started kind of getting accustomed to his new surroundings, whenever we walked into that room, he would charge at us thinking we had food for him. So we're like, okay, we, we can't have this. So what we started doing was we showed him a Frisbee whenever we had food, and then he put the two and two together, and now he only reacts and runs at us for food when we show him that Frisbee. All of the times, he just stays calm now in his pool. This kind of goes along with Ill Goose's question. I know Rex is physically stunted, but how about his brain? Is he as smart as a regular sized gator? I think because of how easy he was to train, both with target training and frisbee training, he picked up on those rather quickly. So I personally think that he is just as smart as any other alligator is. He's just little. He's in a fun, fun size. Uh, this is a good one. We get this a lot too from Jackson Pickup One. Has Rex ever bitten you? And the. <sighs> Yeah, although he gets really excited when, he, we, when we walk into his room, it's not that he's being aggressive and wants to bite. He sometimes gets a little wiggly and may tail whip a little bit when we move him somewhere, but he doesn't bite us. The only thing is he gets so excited for food sometimes that when I walk actually into his enclosure, he may run past my legs and with his teeth sticking out sideways, he once did scratch my calf, sorry, my calf with his tooth, but that's really the extent of any biting that has occurred. Another good question here from Jada Riley GG3, has he ever escaped? Ed actually did a really good job making the wall or the gate that's in his room, so he has not escaped his room, but he has snuck into the turtle enclosure, the new snapping turtle enclosure inside of his room. And a lot of people will house alligators and snapping turtles together because they're both semi-aggressive animals with kind of harder outer shells or harder scales, so they can defend or fend for themselves but we don't wanna risk anything happening. So, and thankfully nothing did happen when he snuck into the turtle tank. She's just fine. But we didn't want anything to happen in the future. So we actually ended up putting some plastic barriers around the snapping turtle's pool. It kind of reminds me of a hockey rink now, but now he cannot get in. So we don't have to worry about anything happening. We've opened up the door to his room and he actually hasn't left it. We've, just to see what he would do, opened it up and left. And he seems to know that that room is his territory. So he doesn't want to leave that because he wants to stay in his territory to defend it. So even if we gave him the opportunity to escape, he probably wouldn't. And he hasn't in the past when we've tried it out. From the Triforce of Rubik's Three, what's cleanup for him like? Rex kind of potty trained himself. We got really lucky with him in that he only goes to the bathroom in a couple spots inside of his room. Usually in the corner of his room, either on the vinyl uh, in, in one of the corners or on top of his cave. I don't know why he likes to poop on top of his cave, but it's really convenient because then I just take that cave outside and I hose it down. So cleanup surprisingly isn't too bad. There's the maintenance as far as changing out light bulbs goes and cleaning out his filter, but that's just like with any other aquatic animal really. And finally, our last question is from Goliath Prime 3. Now that Rex has good nutrition and care, will his jaw and teeth come back into alignment or is it a permanent impairment? He, he has improved. Here's a picture of his snout when we first got him and here's a picture of him recently. As you can see, his snout actually has straightened out considerably and his teeth are not as angled as they used to be. His snout is still slightly curved and his teeth do still stick out a little bit, but it has improved drastically since we got him. We don't think it'll ever be back to normal, like what an, a normal alligator's mouth would look like, but it's really neat to have seen that transformation from when we first got him at least. He doesn't really look like a duck anymore. <laughs> Not as much like a duck. Like, you're still a cute little duck, aren't you? Yes, you are. But that's pretty much Rex in a nutshell. Thanks for all the really good questions. It's been fun kind of answering them for you so you know a little bit more about him. Aw, that was an adorable little grunt. I, if got, uh, I hope they could hear that. Yeah, there you go. That's his grunt. You're a good boy. <laughs> he's, he's a good gator. He's like, put me back. And you're so cute. Okay, I'll put you back after this. <laughs>
Thank you again for your support. We're really humbled to have reached 50,000 subscribers. In the future, we are planning and currently putting together a care video about Rex from feeding him and what it takes to clean and uh, not only his enclosure, but clean him because brushing his teeth is actually a thing. And he's just really loving his head scratches right now. This is, he's being pretty cute, good boy. Uh, but in the meantime, hopefully this helps teach you a little bit more about our alligator and we'll see you next time.